The con press conference is attended by Gideminas Kirkulas, Deputy Speaker of the Seimas, Igor Korman, Speaker of the Parliament of the Republic of, Luthi of Moldova, Mr. Usupashvili, Chairman of the Parliament of Georgia, Madam um, Solvita Aboltina, Speaker of the Sejm of the Republic of Latvia, Hovik Abrahamian, President of the National Assembly of Ar Armenia, and Stanislav Shushkevich, former Speaker of the Supreme Dream Council of Belarus. Mr. Kirkos, the floor is yours. Thank you, dear colleagues, journalists. As you know, the Russian Peace and Partnership will still be uh, debated in one of the sessions of the conference in the afternoon. However, today, in front of you, you have all the speakers, keynote speakers of the conference who will present speeches on the issue. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have Mr. Turchinov with us, Chairman of the Verkhovna Rad of Ukraine, but as we are aware now, there will be a video conference with him, and he's going to speak about the unfortunately deteriorating situation in Ukraine. I've read that Ukrainian journalists believe the deterioration uh, uh, happened because um, so, someone wanted Turchinov to prevent from participating in this conference. Uh, but I'll give the floor to our guests uh, because it is more interesting to listen to them. Uh, later on, we will be able to ask questions so that they could answer. Please, your as a closest neighbor to the Syria. Dear members of press, I would like to thank our Lithuanian colleagues for the many success during the Vilnius Eastern Partnership Summit held here in November. We see today's conference Eastern Partnership session as a sort of bridge to the Riga Eastern Partnership Summit. As you know, Riga will be the next, who will be the presiding country in European Union, and uh, the next Eastern Partnership Summit will be held in May of 2015 in Riga. Uh, we have shared a common history with all the countries seated at this table. All of us have come a long way since all of our freedoms were denied by the total totalitarian Soviet rule. With each year we were distancing ourselves from this dark past. Last month the acts of the Russian Federation were like the coldest and coldest reality checks we could have imagined. In many respects I feel I am reviving 9-11 because the world just changed. We were living in a world where international law was the norm, but not anymore. Much of today's discussions were focused on the situation in Ukraine. And of course, we are deeply concerned about the recent events in Ukraine and Russia's brutal dis disregard for international law and their own tre treaty agreements. It is important that the European Union show unified support for Ukraine. European values are values which help preserve security, stability and economic growth for our people are threatened and we need to defend them. We are prepared to continue sharing our experience on democ democracy, reforms and good governance, which has helped us integrate in the European structures. These values are more important today than ever and they help to ensure both hard and soft security. We have go through Ten years ago, we, we will celebrate now, next uh, month we will celebrate our 10th anniversary since we are a member of European Union and NATO. And uh, we are sure that it's our obligation to assist the countries whose people are, are ready for EU Atlantic integration to, to assist them. Because we can share our experience, there is no language barriers, we understand our, our common past and I am sure that we can do together for our better future. That's why Latvia supports the signing of association agreement with Georgia and Moldova as soon as possible. And uh, the signature of the political part of the association agreement with Ukraine is very important. And I am sure that we can, in Riga, we show the next steps, maybe to sign Riga Freedom Agreement, which will show to the people of, of Eastern Partnership countries, to for Moldovians and, and, and Georgians, the real 
entering into European Union and I hope uh, and, and to, to, to see how people live in free democratic countries and to strengthen closer to the, to the values of, of, of European Union. And we also need to maintain an open door policy for all the countries of Eastern Partnership. My uh, Armenian colleague is, is sitting here. I met him a few weeks ago in, in, uh, in Geneva and he tried to explain that it's important economically for Armenia to, to, to sign agreement uh, with Russia, this uh, trade, 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 uh, trade union agreement. Yes, but, but in the same time, they are ready to continue the way to, to be closer to the Euro, 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 Euro Atlantic integration. And therefore, we are here to discuss these important issues and to, to find common ways for to support our neighbors to be democratic countries. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So, as you know, uh, the colleagues said, said uh, Latvia smooth, smoothly, I would say, taking over uh, the presidency, of course, first of all, but of course, an Eastern partnership. And uh, uh, let me give a floor to the Igor Korman, uh, Moldova, uh, Speaker of Mol uh, Moldova uh, Parliament, uh, this country which is, uh, I believe, uh, successfully going to the association agreement. Please, floor is yours. Thank you, dear Mr. Kirkilas, dear colleagues, dear representatives of mass media. I'm very glad to be here in Vilnius uh, again. I attended uh, the parliamentary conference on 28th of uh, November here in Vilnius during the summit of the Eastern Partnership. By the way, Vilnius uh, sounds very positive in our country because at the summit here in uh, Vilnius last year in November, Moldova initiated the association agreement with the European Union, including free trade area. And now I'm very glad to be here again. It is the first time that uh, the speakers of uh, the countries of the Eastern Partners of the Partnership Initiative um, are attending such a conference and uh, I think this is a, is a signal of uh, openness uh, and uh, it is a message of uh, solidarity with our countries. Uh, once again, thank you very much for that. The Republic of Moldova from the beginning was an active uh, participant in the Eastern Partnership uh, initi Initiative. We are implementing since 2009 our European agenda and in this year 2014 we have to get very important results of our efforts during this period of time. Uh, recently the European uh, Parliament and the Council of the European Union adopted the political decision to abolish uh, visas for Moldovan citizens and uh, in a few weeks uh, on 28th of uh, April Moldovans will have the possibility to travel without visas in Schengen area. Of course we wish that uh, also other partners in the Eastern uh, uh, Partnership Initiative uh, will uh, follow the same way and will get in the near future the same result. In the meantime, we are preparing uh, to sign the association agreement, including free trade area with the European Union. Our intention is to do it also uh, in the next time until June. Our goal of the ruling coalition, of the pro-European coalition in, in Moldova is to associate with the European Union in 2014. Discussing uh, about the Eastern Partnership Initiative, I think uh, it is the time to discuss also about the objective of this initiative, because every action, every initiative should have a clear objective. And this objective, of course, is a clear European perspective for our countries. And I'll speak uh, about this issue also in the afternoon at the conference. Uh, I am sure, I believe, that uh, such uh, recognition, at least for countries like Moldova and other countries which are committed to follow the European path, which have also good results in this uh, process, I think uh, such a recognition will strengthen the European forces in our countries and uh, I'm sure the goal of the European U Union is and should be that this initiative will be successful. Of course we are worried about the situation in our region. 
We are worried about the conflict between uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine. We do hope that uh, the efforts of the international community will lead to avoiding uh, the separatist tendencies in our neighbor country. Uh, you know, Moldova is uh, facing the same problem of separatism in the Transnistrian region, and we do hope that uh, the efforts of all countries involved will uh, lead to the stabilization of the situation in Ukraine. Once again, I would like to thank very much uh, our partners for the permanent and uh, active support of our European efforts. Uh, I will be very glad to uh, meet uh, my colleagues from NB8 uh, countries in uh, May in Chisinau. It's a great initiative uh, of all uh, speakers of uh, Baltic and Nordic countries to organize in this year such a meeting in our country. I think, again, it will be a clear message of uh, solidarity with my country. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, let me give a floor to the, to, the, to the Georgia, which is also successfully going by the, by the integration way to the European Union. Mr. Speaker, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Kirkinos. Uh, good morning, everybody. And I want to thank once again the organizers of this conference, the uh, Lithuanian friends, the Speaker of the Parliament, and uh, I should continue the a phrase of my Moldovan colleague that uh, World Vilnius in Georgia has very, very positive feeling as well. Uh, but uh, the very, very positive feeling uh, has the other worlds like Riga, Athens, Roma and so on, other countries. And we believe that uh, good news is will come from other capitals of uh, European Union as well, and it will happen sooner than later. And we appreciate the decision of the European Union to speed up the process of the uh, finalizing the uh, signature process of the association agreement, uh, the CFTA, and other important uh, documents. And we expect that by the end of June this process will be finalized. Sometimes we are asked this question, why we are in such a hurry? Why we could not wait until August? I believe the answer is clear during last months, that every single day may bring further complications for Georgia and for other countries in the region. Therefore, it is important to act quicker. This is probably one of the imperatives of the current time, current uh, situation where we are. Uh, with that, uh, we, Georgia, are doing everything possible to fulfill all the obligations and uh, there is anonymous support to European integration, NATO integration of Georgia in the Georgian Parliament. We have some issues uh, left with the previous government representatives who are the main opposition group now in Georgia, but we never question the strategy of the country, the way where we are uh, moving forward and uh, the destination of Georgia's uh, journey towards uh, freedom. And we believe that uh, the question whether Georgia should be part of Europe or not is not relevant. We are part of Europe. We, we are part of Europe all the time. We have our statehood since the uh, 4th century when Georgia became a Christian country in the uh, region. Uh, therefore, our journey is back to Europe. At the same time, we understand that there are a lot of things we need to uh, deal with. Of course, uh, the post-communist uh, period of the uh, country at the moment does not allow us to be at the standards of Europe in every single direction. We need a lot of work to do for strengthening democratic institutions, and therefore the uh, help we are getting from our friends, from uh, parliaments of European countries, from governments of European countries, is just huge. And we appreciate that, and we are so thankful for that. Even the uh, fact that we, the representatives of Eastern Partnership countries, are invited uh, on this conference is another demonstration of the uh, growing uh, cooperation between us. And, you know, while sitting in the hall of the conference uh, in a designated area for our uh, colleagues, uh, I was thinking that this is an association agreement about, to be in the same hall, Probably without the pro voting right and decision making, the voting rights, but to be in the same fold. This is association agreement, and 
We are uh, so hopeful that it will happen sooner than later. The same uh, could be said about the NATO integration, and we expect some uh, good decisions uh, from uh, September summit. We understand the complexity of the issue, we understand the difficulty of uh, uh, decision-making there, but we believe that we should make progress in this direction as well. Otherwise, others will make progress. This is more than clear. Therefore, I believe the European Union, its member countries, will be solidar to each other, will act as uh, one uh, uh, democratic uh, unit, which uh, should ensure the peace and stability in the region. We are ready to be with you and to share difficulties and challenges which uh, we face now. I regret that our Ukrainian colleague was not able to come, uh, and we know why he, he, he could not come. And of course, uh, from here we can send another message to Ukrainian people that we are solidar, we are there, and uh, we, they have our support for making their country better and free. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and, and let me uh, let me give a word to to, to the um, Armenian speaker of Armenian Parliament, Horika Branan. Uh, uh, Mr. Branan, thank you for coming, and uh, we are happy that you are here. We are grateful. I believe that we you will have uh, uh, good uh, good meetings and, and good conference. Uh, Mr. Speaker, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate the successful presidency of the Republic of Lithuania in the European Union. I will speak about the Armenia-EU relationship in the context of the Eastern Partnership. The Republic of Armenia has carried out much work and has built up experience in the relationship with the EU. Armenia's decision to join the customs union does not in any way imply that cooperation with the EU will weaken or stop in any way. Armenia remains committed to the European values and principles and we are decisive with our European colleagues to deepen and broaden the process of institutional reform say that strengthening democracy, human rights and the rule of law in our country. During the Vilnius Summit in 2013, a joint declaration was adopted whereby Armenia reiterated her commitment to strengthen cooperation in areas of mutual interest. And in the near future, we plan to uh, continue engaging with the EU on defining the new framework of cooperation. As to the situation in the Ukraine, the Armenian and Ukrainian peoples have for centuries been joined by many ties of uh, friendship and brotherhood. We are confident that the Ukrainian people have the potential to overcome the challenges that they currently face. And you know that we face challenges ourselves in Nagorno-Karabakh in relation to Azerbaijan. Armenia has repeatedly declared that we are committed to the resolution of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict only through peaceful talks under the auspices of the OSC Minsk group based on internationally recognized three principles of self-determination of nations, territorial uh, integrity, and the non-use of force or the threat of force. We will continue our efforts towards resolving our conflict by peaceful negotiated means. Armenia has always been uh, committed to the principle of the right of nations to self-determination. Armenia has never supported uh, any international document in which the right of self-determination of nations would uh, be treated as secondary to the principle of territorial integrity. I'd like to reiterate that the exercise of the principle of self-determination of nations is a key objective of the Charter of the UN. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Dear colleagues, let me turn to, to, to Russian language. Uh, Mr. Sushkevich, Mr. Sushkevich, uh, President of the Democratic 
Mr. Shushkevich is uh, the last freely elected chairman of the Supreme Council of uh, Belarus. And everyone is looking forward to hearing your views. The floor is yours, Mr. Shushkevich. Thank you very much for inviting me to the conference. Well, I understand that I am um, out of context here because I'm not the head of state. I live 180 kilometers away from this parliament. Lithuania and other post-Soviet countries, Latvia, Estonia, Poland, understand Belarus. And this understanding makes us believe that something better will happen. Well, since 1996, there were no free and democratic elections in Belarus. Well, there were elections, but the results of the elections uh, had already been known prior to the elections themselves. This is why Eastern Partnership is uh, difficult to be developed with Belarus. Organizers of Eastern Partnership program couldn't even imagine that uh, this could be the principle guiding the work of a country. The partnership program is uh, distant to work through governments, but we can't uh, work with the government, engage with the government of uh, Belarus. The ones who support uh, president, the president of uh, Belarus uh, can cooperate with us and anyone else are foes of the nation. There is no democracy in the country. You have a lot of political prisoners. None of them is considered to be a political uh, prisoner per se by the official Minsk. We get blamed for the lack of uh, dignity to protest similarly to Ukrainians but colleagues on the 19th of December 2010 the, pro the area of Independence Square in Minsk was crowded with uh, 70,000 people this was even more than any amount of people coming out uh, to Maidan Square in Kiev. But this huge mass, huge crowd who protested against forged uh, elections were beaten up by the, the police and Oman forces. Thousands got arrested. Many of them are still in prison. There were seven presidential candidates among the arrested people. One of these uh, arrested candidates is still in prison. His name is uh, Statkevich. Others uh, were imprisoned for one to two years. And some of them were released, including Mr. Sainikov, who is now in Poland. It is very difficult to engage with Belarus on the conditions of his partnership program. The organizers couldn't even realize that the government could be as anti national and anti democratic. Our president is acting uh, on the basis of anti democracy and anti nation. None of the measures can be denied by the Russian president to. Uh, reinforce his power. And these measures include physical uh, destruction of political competitors, imprisonment of many people, and creation of conditions where people need to leave Belarus. I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the organizers of the conference for having invited me here and having given me the floor. The relations are no different uh, from uh, people in other countries. We are Europeans, but we have lo losses, huge losses, and nobody even uh, realizes the genocide against uh, the Russian nation was uh, uh, a uh, matter of fact. For instance, Americans uh, during the Second World War lost uh, 420,000 servicemen from the army out of 132 million of citizens in the U.S. Out of 10 million citizens in Belarus, 2.5 million uh, perished and uh, 
in the size of uh, military servicemen was uh, higher in, who, in, compared to the ones who d d died in the U.S. We love peace and we are determined. If uh, Europe continues to understand our situation, we will come back to embrace the European family of nations and prove to you that we are Europeans. Ladies and gentlemen, don't act in haste. Don't try to educate and re-educate uh, Lukashenko as you did in the previous uh, formation of uh, the EU Council. We're in some Istanbul summit in 1999, uh, four commitments were signed by uh, Lukashenko, but uh, two uh, high representatives, um, Mr. Solana and uh, Bilik Navalny, said they had no conditions to support these uh, commitments. The opposition in Belarus were then ashamed and embarrassed to keep continue and continue saying that uh, Belarus is acting out of its high moral standards and principles. In this uh, conference, I can see a different approach, and I'm grateful to you for your attention and uh, to the fact that uh, despite of the bad situation in Ukraine, you have uh, paid attention to Belarus and invited me. Thank you, Mr. Shushkevich, for your very interesting ideas. Kristina? Klaus, come to the Klaus, for me quickly. I have a question to Mr. Kirkilas and to any of the guests who are willing to answer. Speaker of Lithuanian Parliament and uh, Speaker of Hellenic Parliament said that the deteriorating situation in Ukraine could be solved through dialogue. Could you clarify uh, who are you going to engage with and how? As journalists, you are right. There is no di dialogue with Russia so far, even though clearly there are many diplomatic channels involved in attempting to do this. There is no dialogue on that matter. I have to acknowledge that. The European Union's position is uh, to reach this dialogue, to engage in dialogue. Maybe this, uh, we need more time and uh, diplomatic efforts. So far, exchanges in uh, some statements from on, the, on behalf of Russia are uh, present, but there is no dialogue. Salvita? I want to add some, uh, some words. Uh, I, I think it's the common, uh, it, it has been a common reaction from European Union countries. Not only from European Union countries, because uh, Russia has this brutal disregard of international law, it is United Nations chapters, and, and they had set the United Nations on one side of the table and Russia on the other side of the table, because it was the Treaty of 1949 where United States, uh, United Kingdom, and Russia guaranteed uh, territorial integrity for, for Ukraine, and now it is uh, everything is put away, and therefore we have to think about future and, and about such such attitudes from Russia to, to the international law, for, to, to the agreement agreements which Russia has signed for themselves. And of course, I, I agree that we have to find uh, arguments for Russia and diplomatic arguments, because it's not possible in the 21st century to start this uh, war. But, but, but we have to speak in our voice, and it is very important that Europe will be united, decisive, and, and, and clear, and, and send clear signals and messages to, to Russia. More questions? Yes, please. Please take the question. Civic Fund. Question to Stanislav Shushkevich. The President of Russia, Mr. Putin, said that the Soviet Union was dissolved in not very le on not very legal grounds. Could you comment on this expression by Mr. Putin and the actions of Russia towards Ukraine? When Russian 
statesmen become charismatic. They say that there was a referendum on uh, the USSR and that the referendum should not have been violated. Now they say that there had been a referendum on the Crimea and uh, the results should not be violated. They will find any ways to support uh, their arguments and uh, promote propaganda. The USSR uh, was dispersed de jure. Uh, in a very legal way. De facto, it stopped existing on in, in August in 1991 of, because Gorbachev was no longer to hold power and uh, state, uh, the public uh, government were unable to rule the country. This uh, was a huge danger. In Belarus, Forest, we signed an agreement, parties to the agreement where all the establishers of the USSR, including Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus. Okay. So all the official establishers of the USSR met to decide to continue the CIS, uh, the Commonwealth of Independent Nations, instead of the USSR. Those who are unhappy with that say that this was only illegal. Even the Duma in Russia decided to denounce this agreement in 1996. But later on, the Duma, the Russian parliament, de realized this was uh, absurd because they didn't know how to use it. Then it ex they explained that this has no political consequences and this is no, not a law to be adhered to. Uh, this uh, was a decision made three months later. The statements of uh, Mr. Putin amount to not a legal approach, but uh, to something else. Thank you very much, Mr. Shushkevich. Uh, if no, thank you for, for the participants of this press conference, the speakers of, uh, of uh, five countries. And we have to back to, to, to the conference, speaker conference. Thank you. Здравствуйте, здравствуйте, здравствуйте. Это что?